you see a cow grazing in a field and don't think much more about it. Do you really want to know how cattle and their produce affect our health and that of our children? Take this glass of cow's milk. We assume this is the most wholesome, healthy, complete food. The truth is, one teaspoonful of milk could contain up to two million pus cells. Do you really want to know? Maybe not. Do you need to know? Definitely. Today we'll lead busier, more hectic lives than ever before. Lose 40 pounds in 30 days. We are an advertiser's dream and our own worst nightmare. We, the consumers, eagerly lap up everything they throw at us. In the beginning, our ancestors hunted on foot, often walking for many days before successfully capturing a meal. We don't exercise the way our ancestors did. Our sedentary lives mean our bodies no longer need the high calorie consumption of saturated fat. Milk is the first food we consume. Our mother's breast milk, if we are fortunate. Breast milk is high in polyunsaturated essential fatty acids. The human brain develops rapidly during the first year of life, growing much faster than the body and tripling in size by the age of one. The higher level of unsaturated fatty acids in human milk reflects the important role of these fats in brain development. A rapid increase in body size is more imperative for cows than rapid brain development. Therefore, cows provide milk that is high in bodybuilding saturated fats to help their calves grow rapidly in size. We assume cow's milk is the most wholesome, healthy, complete food there is. The truth is, it is for baby cows. Dairy cows are the hardest worked of all farm animals. A cow nurtures a growing baby inside her while simultaneously producing up to 120 pints of milk a day. To keep the flow going, she is forcibly impregnated every year and her babies are taken away a day or two after birth, year after year after year. It's not surprising this continual state of pregnancy and lactation takes its toll. Over a million cows a year suffer from excruciating mastitis, a bacterial infection of the teat. When not treated, it results in the formation of pus. In the United Kingdom, milk from infected cows containing up to 400 million pus cells per liter can legally be sold for human consumption. In the United States, the legal amount of pus cells per liter varies from state to state, with Rhode Island being the lowest at just over 200 million pus cells per liter, and Florida being the highest legally allowing just over 500 million pus cells per litre. One teaspoonful of milk could contain up to two million pus cells. Now, would you drink it? Many ailments are associated with high dairy consumption. Extensive research has been carried out over numerous years, the most comprehensive being the China study. Professor T. Colin Campbell from Cornell University in New York joined forces with colleagues in China, France, United Kingdom, Canada and the United States. These leading medical professionals using approved scientific methods have exposed long-term side effects from drinking cow's milk. A joint study between Canada and Finland implicated cow's milk as a risk factor for type 1 diabetes in every one of the diabetic children studied. A compound called insulin-like growth factor, known as IGF-1, is found in cow's milk and has been shown to occur in increased levels in the blood by individuals consuming dairy products on a regular basis. Men who had the highest levels of IGF-1 had more than four times the risk of prostate cancer compared with those who had the lowest levels. Professor T. Colin Campbell suggests that IGF-1 is turning out to be a predictor to certain cancers, including prostate, in much the same way that cholesterol is a predictor of heart disease. Of all the predictors of prostate cancer, the consumption of dairy is the best predictor of prostate cancer. During their lifetime, 
the average American consumes almost 600 pounds of dairy products, which is about three times more dairy than grains and almost five times more dairy than vegetables. In Western cultures, we have a tendency to ignore our health until there is a problem. Then, and only then, do we seek medical advice. Preventative medicine is just not very high up on the agenda. Cigarettes were once marketed to women as a diet aid. Today, most people recognize that smoking is the biggest single preventable risk factor for cancer. However, it is less well known that a poor diet is the second largest preventable risk factor for cancer. It's not true to say that milk is the best source of calcium. A 100 gram serving of plain tofu containing almost double the amount of calcium than 100 milliliters of milk. A small 25 gram serving of sesame seeds contains more calcium than a glass of milk. Foods rich in calcium include dark green vegetables such as broccoli, bok choy, kale, beans, tofu, tahini, almonds, figs, seaweeds, and fortified soy milk. You can also find milk replacements made from rice, cashews, almonds, oats, and peas. Now you know the harm this innocent looking glass of milk does to your body, to the cow, and to the planet. Next time you go to purchase a pint of milk, why not try a non-dairy alternative? Your small step could make a huge difference to your health, your child's, your family's, and to the planet.